a powerful one. Can we give God a shout of victory in the house? That's not a victory shout. I said a shout of victory. Amen. And have your seats in Jesus' name. We want to bless the name of the Lord for the wonderful opportunity to be in his presence tonight and we'd like to appreciate all, I mean the team in charge of the reopening for the walking behind the scenes and those of us who are here tonight and to our viewers uh, online tonight, you're welcome once again to another time of refreshing in his presence I want to believe that God has been good to you. We are still talking about the subject of managing crisis effectively because that's the goal, the design, and the plan of God. I want to believe that this teaching is helping us. Amen. Second Corinthians 4, we are going to read our foundation scripture. Second Corinthians 4, verse 8. Through to nine. Paul speaking by the Spirit of God says, We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not what? Destroyed. Now, this is a man who has gone through crisis, uh, or this is a man who is familiar with crisis, uh, this is a man that God has helped uh, to undo crisis, uh, and he is speaking by the Spirit of God that in spite, despite of all the crisis, uh, in whatever shape or fashion, that those crises has come at him, his response uh, had been spot on. Paul knew how to respond to crisis, uh, and I believe that that's the reason why he was a winner. Paul is uh, a classic example of somebody who handled crisis uh, effectively. Like I've mentioned and we have been saying it, we are living the crisis situation in the world right now. We are in a state of crisis. The word crisis uh, means uh, a time of testing, uh, a time of intense uh, difficulty and danger. That is what we are living in. God has not left you and I without a solution or without a hope. That's why we have been talking about uh, the things that will help us uh, to be a better crisis manager. Say after me, say, I will become. Come on, say it like you are sure. Say, I will become a better crisis manager. Listen, if there's one thing that God wants for you and I, is that we become better at managing crisis. And that is the whole intent and purpose of this series of messages. So far, I have shared with us two things that will help us to become a better crisis manager. The first one I said, you must be willing to go through crisis. Then the second one that I mentioned on Sunday also is that you must use the tools and the resources uh, that the Almighty has equipped you with regards to handling crisis. By the special grace of God tonight, I'm going to move on uh, to sharing with us uh, the third element uh, or the third key that will help you to become better at managing crisis. Uh, and that is uh, you must uh, be ready to follow the directives uh, or the instructions of the Lord. Listen to this. If you are going to become better at solving, I mean, at a better crisis manager, at handling crisis effectively, you must follow the directions, or if you like, the directives, or the instructions of God to you. One thing I discovered about Apostle Paul and several other people who are very effective as um, at managing crisis or, or handling crisis uh, was that uh, they knew how to hear from heaven. I'm going to show you some scriptures uh, 
I don't want to come to them. I want to take you to the scriptures. I'm going to use Apostle Paul. You will see in instances upon instances uh, while he was in crisis, uh, one thing that kept him going was uh, what God had said or what God was saying to him. Let me show you those examples very quickly. Let's go to Acts of the Apostles. Uh, Acts of the Apostles chapter 18. Um, this is when he was at Corinth. Uh, he faced a lot of crisis there. Look at what God told him verse 9. Then spoke the Lord to Paul uh, in the night by a vision. Be not afraid, uh, but speak. Uh, hold not your peace, uh, for I am with you. And no man shall set on thee to hurt you, for I have much people what in this city. Now, this is an instance of crisis at Corinth. You can see that he had from heaven. And that gave him the courage and the boldness to go on. Let me show you another instance. Go to Acts 23. This is another place entirely different from Corinth. Acts 23. Are you there? If you are there, say amen. amen. Now look at this. Okay, this was when he was in Jerusalem. When he was arrested for preaching the gospel. Look at verse 11. And the night following the Lord stood by him. Some say stood by him. And said. Now you see, the, the idea of standing by somebody is to encourage that person. And I feel like telling somebody here tonight, you are never alone. You are never alone. Don't ever think that you're alone the Bible says in Psalm 23 verse 4, it says, Here do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. Sometimes I say, God is with me. He now says, Be of good cheer, Paul, for as you have testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou also bear witness at Rome. Now, I wanted to take time, go and read Acts 27. That's another instance. While he was going to Italy, I mean, his boat or sheep rather had an issue. 14 days, uh, no light. No, they didn't know whether it was, I mean, day or night. And they were on the high seas. Uh, everybody was afraid. Now, in the midst of that crisis, uh, what kept Paul going? You can read from verse 22 down to about 34. You will see that what kept him going was what God had said. He sold them in Acts 27 verse 25. He says, wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer because it shall be, listen to this, it shall be according as what God has told me. Hear me and hear me tonight. Child. If you are going to become better at handling crisis and managing the crisis of life, you must hear from heaven. You must be able to hear from heaven. Listen, someone said, why do I need to listen to God? Why do I need to hear what God has to say? Listen, God knows how to handle crisis. There is no crisis of life that you are going through right now that God does not know the way. I remember a song used to sing in those days in FSX. My Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is what? Follow. There is no crisis you are going to pass through or you are passing through right now that the Almighty will not see you through. Can I have an amen in the house? Now, listen and listen good. Now, the, the Bible makes us understand, I mean, or, or let, let, me go, let me go in this direction. I'm talking about following God's directives. I'm talking about following God's instruction to you. Now, the question is this. How does God communicate his directions or directives to us? I'm going to look at three ways very quickly tonight. Now, how can you know what God is saying? How does God communicate his mind? Number one, by knowing what he's saying to you. Listen to this. That's how, that's one of the way God communicates his directions or directives. By knowing what he's saying to you, number one. Then number two, by knowing where he wants you to go. Listen, there is a place to go and there are places not to go in the time of crisis. Not only that, not only knowing what he's saying to you, not only knowing where he wants to go, but knowing what to do. Listen, there is that which you need to do. In the, listen, you can't afford to be idle. You can't afford to be passive. 
The Bible says in James 2 verse 36, as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without corresponding actions is dead. Listen, I want to ask you a question tonight. Do you know what God is saying to you in, the, in this season? Do you have an idea? Listen, there are many voices in the world right now. Voice of the flesh. Voice of circumstance. Voice of man. Listen, you can't afford to follow those voices. Listen, if you follow the voice of man, you may be led astray. You can't listen to the voice of reasoning. It will help you in the time of crisis. Listen, there is the voice of the Lord. Hey, glory be to God. I said glory be to God. The Bible says in Isaiah 30 verse 21, you will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. Listen to me, child of God. The voice of God will guide you through this season. Listen, you must, you must watch out for the right voice. There are, listen, there are strange voices. You will never hear strange voices. Jesus said, my sheep, how, does you, how, how do you know the sheep? They hear his voice. Listen, the shepherd, the chief shepherd, who is Jesus Christ, uh, will lead you. The Bible says, he leaded me, why? Besides still waters. Listen to this. Uh, he will navigate your way through this crisis. Uh, and you will come to a safe haven in the name of Jesus. Uh, I'm telling somebody here listening to me tonight, uh, he will navigate the way for you through this crisis uh, and you will not be put to shame in the name of Jesus. But do you know what he's saying to you? Do you know what he's saying to you? Do you know where he wants you to go? There is a place he has appointed for your provision. There is a place he has appointed for your help. Listen, every place is not the place. Are you hearing me tonight? I said, are you hearing me tonight? Every place is not the place. You know, this is very funny saying. There are many roads to the market. Listen, <laughs> that may be true naturally speaking. But listen, if you are going to walk with God, you have to walk along his ways. The Bible says, my ways are not your ways. Isaiah 55 verse 8. And nine, neither my thoughts uh, are not your thoughts. As the heavens are higher than the hand, so are my ways higher than your ways. Uh, and my thoughts, what? Higher. God's ways is better. God's ways are superior. You know, in the time of crisis, during Elijah time, listen, God directed him to a place to go. First Kings 17, verse 2. Go to the brook, Cherent. They say, stay there. I have commanded the ravens. If he went somewhere else, he will, he, will, he will miss his provision. You will not miss your provision. I said you will not miss out on your provision. If you look at verse 9, when the brook dried up, God says, time up. Go to where? Zarephath. There is a place he has appointed your provision. The Bible says, uh, the Bible says in Proverbs 14 verse 12, Proverbs 16 verse 25, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the ends thereof are the ways of death. You will never walk along the path of death. So, uh, if you want to know, I mean, what God's directive are, are made up of these three things. At least, listen, it is made up of what is he saying to me? Where does he want me to go? What does he want me to do? You can't afford to be idle in this crisis. Amen. amen. I said amen. amen. There, is, there are things you are supposed to do. There are actions you are supposed to take. And listen, listen. I, I, I feel like dwelling a little bit on this before I move on tonight. Listen. You must follow God's instructions. Uh, you must follow God's directive uh, if you want to become a better crisis manager. Listen, you can't afford to follow the ways of man or your own ways. Neither can you afford to follow the multitude. Exodus 23 verse 2. It says, thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Let me shock you. The, listen, God is not always in the majority. At times people say majority is the voice of God. Show me where is that. Show me where you find that in the Bible. No. That's the saying of man. 
I said, that's the saying of man. And I want you to know that if you're going to navigate your way through crisis, uh, you must know what God. So the question I'm asking you tonight is this. What is he saying to you in this crisis? Do you know what God is saying to you in this crisis? Do you know where God wants you to go in this crisis? <laughs> do you know what he wants you to do? You know, one of the ways you know, people are, I'm listening, there's a lot of uncertainty now and fear in the world. But listen, that's not supposed to be your portion. And many of us know Psalm 23. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. What does he say? The Lord is what? I cannot hear you. The Lord is what? He didn't say the Lord was. He didn't say the Lord is going to be. He said the Lord is. Some say is. That's a present reality. That's a living testimony. Not something that was. Or not something that, listen, listen. Your, your relationship with God, to get a stand, will determine whether you're able to hear what he's saying. If you are listening to me tonight, anything that is blocking your earways, anything that's not allowing you to see, I take it off in the name of Jesus. Satan may say, My eyes will see. Say, My ears will hear. Satan may say, I will never walk in the dark. Listen, you cannot be an effective crisis manager if you don't know what God is saying. Listen, God is not always in the majority. That's why you must be able to hear God for yourself. Listen, when I, when I look at the criteria, when I look at the lives, rather, of the people who were effective in handling crisis, they knew how to hear the voice of God. Elijah was familiar with the voice of God. David was familiar. Even Joseph. When you read Psalm 105. 17 to 19. The Bible says he sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for what? A servant. The Bible says it was, his feet was laid in iron. I mean, it was, his feet rather was hot with feathers. He was so, it was laid in iron. Verse 19 now says, until the time, don't say time, that his word came. So he understood the timing. He could discern it. Let me say this to you today, tonight. One of the greatest gifts you can walk in as a child of God is to know what God is saying to you. When you know what God is saying to you, you will not be shaken. Say, say to somebody, say no shaking. Come on, say like somebody say, say no shaking. Ladies and gentlemen, it's so important. Let me, look at the examples I gave you, those scriptures. Do you know that there was so much Turbulence, too much crisis, yet what God said to Paul gave him assurance. Everybody was scared. I mean, was scared rather for their lives. On that voyage, that ship going to Italy, there was uncertainty. Imagine not seeing the sun or the sky for 14 days. You cannot tell whether it was day or night. That's a crisis. Listen, they lost appetite. They were forced to fast. You know, at times we tell some people fast. They say, ah, I cannot fast. But you know, there's some kind of problems that will make you to fast. <laughs> this one, they declared it themselves. Nobody asked them to go and they proclaim fast. They say, we, we have to. Do you know you can be in some problems that you will lose appetite? You can be in some crisis that you will lose appetite. Do you know when all was going on? Paul was calm. Paul was cool. Ah, they said, ah, this man. He told them, he said, you should have listened to me. I told you, don't go this way. Do you know that if they had listened to what Paul said, they would not have experienced that problem? But because they said, what do you know? You're a preacher. You don't know anything about, about sailing. This man is an experienced sailor. Keep quiet. They, listen, when the crisis came, everybody lost appetite, except Paul. I'm praying for you tonight. Listen, in the midst of this crisis, when others cannot sleep, you will sleep. Yes. <laughs> Somebody was saying this to me. He said, ah, he said we are sleeping with one eye open. I said, why? When the Bible says, he giveth his beloved. He giveth, are you his beloved? Yes, then you qualify for sweet sleep. Sweet sleep. 
My wife knows when I hit the bed, they met somebody. I thought she said, ah, I'm trying to touch. I said, ah, <laughs> I have traveled. They met somebody. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. He giveth his beloved sweet sleep. Whatever is not making you to sleep, I prophesy tonight, your sleep is restored. You see, there's a confidence that hooses out of you when you know what God is saying or what God has said to you. Listen, God will send his answer of peace until we settle the matter for you tonight. That amen is not born again. Listen, I feel like there is somebody here. I don't know what is troubling you now. God is going to send his word, his answer, peace, and it will settle the matter forever in the name of Jesus. Listen to this. We do not deny that we are not in the midst of crisis. Paul said, we are troubled on every side. He said, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in de- we are not despondent. Listen to this. My Lord knows the way. God, that's why his name is called Waymaker. Say Waymaker somebody. He will make ways for you. <laughs> I feel this rejoicing in my spirit. When men say there's a casting down, you will say there's a lifting up. Listen to this. Oh my God. Listen, listen. With, with all the <laughs> severity of the matter of what the world is facing now, do you know that uh, the Bible says in the midst of turbulence in Psalm 46, uh, there is a river that makes glad the city of God. That will be your testimony in Jesus' name. So back to my question. Do you know what God is saying to you? Do you know where God wants you to go in this season? Do you know what he wants you to do? Because there are things to do. Listen, you cannot be idle in this season. You can't be passive. If you are going to become an effective crisis manager, there are things he expects to do. There are places he expects to go. And listen, you must take heed to what he's saying to you. Glory be to God. Listen, I have discovered that one of the greatest challenges to following God's directives, to following God's instructions is because many people don't know what God is saying. Many people don't know where to go. Many people don't know what to do. But listen, as a child of God, listen, that should not be your testimony. Listen, you are never alone. He said, lo, Matthew 20 verse 20, lo, I am with you for some times. No, for how long? Sometimes he say, my Lord is with me all the way. Listen to this. I want to zero in on the remaining time that I have this, this evening on because I know that this is an area of challenge for m- most people. How can I know what God is saying? I mean, how can I know this thing about hearing God? How can I know what he's saying to me now? How can I know what to do now? How can I cannot know where to go? I'm going to share with you very quickly tonight about four things, four major principles that can help you to hear God in any season. To hear God in any season. Listen, if you have these four things in place, you will hear God. (laughs) God just said something to me, very funny. Listen, if Jonah had God's voice in the belly of the whale, you are not in the belly of the whale. Say to yourself, say, I have hope. hope. Imagine somebody in the belly. Have you ever seen a whale before? If you have watched National Geographic, those things are massive. Amen, somebody. Imagine you finding yourself in the belly of a way. You know, someone say, ah, maybe if you pray, God will not even hear you. <laughs> How can you hear God? He had God. Say to yourself, say, I'm not in the belly of a way now. Look at your neighbor, say, your case is different. <laughs> so what does it take to hear God? What does it take to know where to go? What to do? 
Let me say this to somebody. Listen. If you follow the multitude, you may be led astray. Follow God. It's important. Follow God. Because he's the only one that can lead you to a safe haven. And your expectation will not be cut off in the name of Jesus. If you believe that, say a better amen. amen. So how can I know what to do? Number one, by you by walking and fellowshipping with the Lord. <laughs> Let me say this to you. One of the greatest blessings you can do for yourself, one of the greatest service you can do for yourself is to take your walk with God seriously. God said something to me some years ago and he brought it to my mind again this evening. And what is it? Listen, it will be difficult for you to hear God if you are not familiar with him. i say it again. It will be difficult to hear God if you are not familiar. You know, that's the greatest problem we have. People are not familiar with God. They are not used to God. Listen, you are his child. You need to be familiar with your daddy. Years ago, when Baba Debe was talking about, he was calling God daddy, some people got angry. He said, how, how, how can you call God daddy? Say, his father. He said, no need to fight. His father to you, but he's my daddy. You know, some people got angry. I'm talking about Christians. How, how, how can you be saying God is his daddy? You see, that's, the, that's, his, that's his level of work with God. That's why you are angry. You have not gotten there. Listen. <laughs> If you, if you take what I'm saying tonight seriously, if you nurture your walk with God, listen, hearing God will be easy. It will be the easiest thing. The reason people always say this, it was that me, was that God or the devil that was speaking to me. The reason is because they are not used to working with God. Listen, when you have developed a relationship with the Holy Spirit, listen, the person you walk with Closely, you want to discern. You know, they say this about married couples when they have lived together for a long time, they begin to what look and sound what alike. It's the principle of what association. When the Bible says in Second Corinthians 13, verse 14, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship. Sounds a like fellowship. That word fellowship means communion, partnership. Some people don't take their work with the Holy Spirit very seriously. There's a, there's a place in 1 John 1 verse 7. The Bible says if you walk in the light, as in, it's in the light, the blood of the Son cleanses us. Amen, somebody? And look at this. I love that. It says if you walk in the light, as it's in the light, we have fellowship. Say fellowship. There's no way you can have fellowship if you, if you don't draw close to him. Draw close to him. God says, draw near unto me. And what will happen? I will draw near. James 4 verse 8. So, listen, take your daily walk with God seriously. Do you know that out of your fellowship and relationship with God, hearing God should flow out of it? <laughs> the reason why people struggle with hearing God's voice is because they are not familiar with God. I want to challenge you tonight. Get familiar. Get more familiar. You are too far away. Draw close. Take your meditation in the word of God. Your worship. Your prayer. Take it seriously. You know, at times it, 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 I get marveled. Or I mean, I get surprised rather. When, when some people are complaining about some things. Listen, you are not spending enough time with God. So... Whose fault is it that you don't know what he's saying? Look at your neighbor and tell him. Say, how close are you to God? Job 22 verse 21. Job 22 verse 21. It says, acquaint yourself now with him. Acquaint what? Yourself now with him and be a what? At peace. Listen, peace is as a result of acquaintanceship. Peace is as a result of being familiar with him. I want to challenge you tonight. If you are not taking your work with God seriously, you, you need to take it seriously. 
In the early days of my Christian experience, when people used to say, I had God, I had God, I used to wonder, ah, how, how, how are they hearing God? Until I got to know that your day-to-day walk with him, the more you walk with him, the better you are able to hear the voice of your father. Listen, this is not something I can do for anybody. This is something you have to do for yourself. I've given this explanation before. If you live in the house, if you have been staying in the house there for like three, four years, I can bet you, you will be able to distinguish the voices of the people in that house. But if you're a stranger, if, uh, let's say you are, you are in, um, why is that street again? Amen. Glory be to God. On those streets, amen. Somebody. Where, I mean, Debbie lives and the rest of them. Let's say you are there now and somebody is talking. Listen, you, you, and say, who is talking? Say, ah, you may be guessing because you don't live there. But if you live there and you have lived there for some time, you can tell, oh, no, that's Debbie, that's Anita, that's, that's Danny. He meant somebody. Look at the neighbor and tap and say, take your walk with God seriously. <laughs> Let me say this to you. Hearing God, there's nothing magical about it. There's nothing magical. There's nothing mysterious about it. Years ago, somebody used to do something that makes people to believe that hearing God was difficult. Amen, somebody. When we do like this, quiet, 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 quiet. God is speaking. Ah, what do you mean God is speaking? I seem to say God was speaking inside his ears. And giving people the wrong impression that, you know, that's misleading. Amen, somebody. <laughs> Let's take our walk with God seriously. Sometimes you say, I will take my walk with God seriously. You see, out of your walk with God, the voice of God will be made clearer to you. And I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus that God will visit your walk with him tonight. That is the first principle in being able to discern what God is saying. Number two, the second thing that will help you to discern what God is saying is through the prophetic word. God often speaks, in fact, most of the time, he speaks through his word to us. The word of God is the voice of God. God uses his word to quicken his thoughts and his mind to us. You see this expression. When you read the prophets, most of the prophets, you will see this phrase, and the word of the Lord came unto him. The word of what? The Lord. Some say the word of the Lord. God speaks to you. Do you know that as I'm speaking the word of God now, do you know that God is shining his light on some areas of your life and my life? I've been blessed over the years. At times, listen to a message like this, God just speaks to me. Because it's the word of God is living. The word of God is a living being. The word of God is active. If you, if you expose yourself to the word of God, you will hear the voice of God. Because when God's word is being taught and preached, there lies the voice of the Lord. Psalm 107 verse 20 says, He sent his word. You know the word is light. Say light. Shout to say light. Do you know that direction or what we call instruction from God is like light? It's like God shining his light on areas that is what? Hidden or strewed away from you. There's somebody hearing me tonight. Uh, the light of God is shining to every dark area. When, listen, when the word of God comes in, it, it, it beams in such light. That's why the psalmist said, thy word is what? A lamp unto what? My feet and a light unto what? What did he call the word of God? Lamp and what? Light. Say lamp and light. Both of them are two kinds of what? Thank you, sir. Two kinds of illumination. But one is higher than what? The other. Let me give an instance. If you buy a 10 watt bulb, it's not the same thing as a 200 watt bulb. Hello? Both of them will bring light. But 
the 200 watt bulb, the light will be what? Brighter. Listen, the more you expose yourself to the word of God, the greater the illumination of God's word in your life, the easier to hear his voice. Somebody told me some years ago, and I believe it, because I went through that experience. Do you know at times, so some of us, to quieting yourself before God, it takes a lot of time. I don't know what I'm talking about. You are praying. Listen, you can be, you can be here now and you're at home eating amala. Amen, somebody. Or you say, hey, nine o'clock. That much. You are here, but listen, your mind is somewhere else. You, 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 that, that's part of the distractions that we face in the presence of God. But you know something? The more you expose yourself to the word of God, the word of God will calm your mind down. Tell your neighbor, say, let your mind come to the place of rest. Say, calm down. Amen, somebody. The word of God can calm your mind down. Amen, somebody. Can calm your mind down. Amen, somebody. All the, all the agitation, all the worries, the word of God will calm it down. Bible talking about the peace of God that passes all understanding. Thou will keep him, Isaiah 26, verse 3. You will keep him in perfect peace. Whose what? Mind. The word stay there is fixed on him because he trusts in him. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to encourage you. One of the ways by which you get familiar to the voice of God is to, listen, train yourself to hearing the word of God through the prophetic word that God speaks. There's one scripture that God used to speak to me in a time of major crisis in my life. That scripture is found in the book of Micah. Where it says, arise, depart. It says, this is not the place of, of rest. It says, if you stay there, it will destroy you. I mean, that scripture spoke so much to me that I was in fact, at the point I was 35 because it, 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 it's like God was speaking to me directly. Glory be to God. I'm trying to find the scripture. I think it's Zechariah. I think it's Micah. Glory be to God. Let me show you because Micah, glory be to God. I said, glory be to God. Yeah. Micah 2, verse 10. It says, Rise ye and depart, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted. It shall destroy you, even with the sword destruction. Listen, I was somewhere hearing the word of God, and somebody was preaching. You see, this scripture, it was like he just leaped out and just was just it just became glued on my mind. I knew what God was saying. I knew what he was saying to me. That I didn't, didn't need anybody to interpret it. I knew what he was saying. Have you ever had the experience where the word of God came so real to you? It's like God talking to you personally. I'm the one I'm talking, talk, talk, I mean, talking about. That's how this scripture, Micah 2 verse 10. It, it, it was so real, it was like someone was sitting beside me and telling me those words. Glory be to God. That's the power of the prophetic word. That's the power of the prophetic word. It will guide you through this season of crisis. And you will come out victorious in the name of Jesus. Number three, we're looking at principles that will help you to know when God is speaking. This is how you, because if you're going to be a better crisis manager, you must be able to hear God. The tragedy of the Christian experience that many people cannot hear God for themselves. They are leaning on others. That's not a safe guide to follow. You can't be depending on others. Look at them and say, grow up. Number three, Third principle that can help you to know what God is saying is by paying attention. Paying attention to how God speaks to you. I want to ask you, listen, God speaks to us in different ways, all of us in different ways. Listen, you will do yourself a great deal of good to know how God speaks to you. This, this is an area of you have not paid attention. There's a way God speaks to us. You must get used to it. 
There's some people, God speaks to them through dreams and revelations. That's, that's, I mean, just like God spoke to Joseph, gave him a dream, gave him a revelation. There are examples of that in the Bible. There are people, I mean, God gets across to them through their dreams and revelations. Amen. amen. I said, amen. amen. Very rarely. Say rarely. Rarely at times we see God speaking through the audible voice. Not what I said. I said, rarely. Rarely. Go and read the book. I mean, you, I can count the number of places people heard the voice of God audibly in the Bible. If somebody is telling you, I hear God's voice audibly, be wary of that person. <laughs> Amen. That, it, listen, the Bible is the final authority. If you are hearing God's voice audibly like you are going to the toilet, ah, then something is wrong somewhere. Something is wrong because, I mean, the, the Bible is the pattern. Glory be to God. One of the most commonest, the most frequent ways that God speaks to virtually all of us is through your intuition. Say intuition. What you say, ah, something is telling me. I feel this, that I have this knowing, on it, this conviction, this prompting that we call it different names. Amen, somebody? Amen. It's called the witness of the Holy Spirit. You know, the Bible says the Spirit beareth witness with our spirit. Romans 8, 16. Paul Listen, at times it's also the voice of your conscience. Your conscience. Paul was saying in Romans 9 verse 1. Romans 9 verse 1. It says, I speak the truth in Christ. I lie not. My conscience bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. Do you know your conscience is the voice of your spirit? Hello? Reason is the voice of your mind. And listen, your conscience becomes a safe guide. When you become born again. Because the Holy Spirit is living inside you. Inside your spirit. You see, at times I tell people. That thing you are calling something. They are trying to shake off. That's God trying to talk to you. Look at them and say pay attention. There's a scripture that was used for Samuel. When he was trying to get familiar with the voice of God. 4 Samuel chapter 3. You can read the story. 4 Samuel chapter 3 from verse 4 to 7. When God called him, where did he go to? He went to meet Eli. How many times? Now, Eli perceived. Say perceived. That's a very important word. That's somebody who is used to what? Say, ah, it's like God is speaking to this boy. He, did, he doesn't know, but I have the knowing. Amen? He said the next time you hear the voice, say what? Speak, Lord. Your servant what? Now, the Bible now said, it, said in 1 Samuel 3 verse 4, I mean verse 7, the Bible says, now Samuel did not yet what? Know the Lord, neither the word of the Lord was what? Yet revealed. That was why he was struggling to discern it. But do you know that day he got it? And I'm saying this prophetically tonight. You will never walk in the dark. You will never be stranded or confused with discerning how God speaks to you because you now begin to pay attention. I, I can tell you, I have suffered from not listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. You know, they say at times experience, it's a very, I mean, it's a bitter teacher. It teaches you in a bitter way because you burnt your fingers. I brought burnt their fingers before. You know, that's part of learning things. A child learns how to walk by what? Falling. A child learns how to speak by what? Stammering or stuttering. I don't think any child just goes like that and begins to speak. If your child begins to just speak like that, I'm sure you, you're going to wonder, ah, what's wrong with this child? Calls you daddy without any, you know, no rehearsals, zero rehearsals or practicing. Just like that, start speaking English. Queen's English. I'm sure you, you put an aesthetic on, on the end of the child. I want to encourage you. Pay attention to the way God speaks to you. The more familiar you are with the way God speaks to you, the easier for you to design his voice. I'm praying for somebody tonight that by the power of the Holy Spirit, 
your eyes of understanding have been enlightened in the name of Jesus. Ephesians 1 verse 18 says that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling. You will never walk in the dark. Again, in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. I said glory be to God. Then the fourth one, I will close on this. How can I know the voice of God? How can I know when God is speaking to me? You know, at times one of the ways you can know is by asking the Lord to reveal unto you. Ask God to reveal unto you what's, what's his mind. I do that at times when I don't know. I say, God, what are you saying? God, should I go? Should I not go? Where should I go? What should I do? Amen. You need to be found. Listen to this. There's no law that says you cannot ask God. It says, ask, it shall be given to you. Seek, you shall find. Knock, the door shall be what? That's what the Bible says in Psalm, I mean, Matthew 7 verse 7. In fact, there's a scripture in Psalm 25. Psalm 25, David was saying, uh, uh, okay, I, I, I don't want us to read it because of time. Psalm 25 verse 4, it says, show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Verse 5 now says, lead me in your truth. Amen. It says, for you are the God of my salvation. And on you I wait all day long. You know one of the secrets, one of the secrets of David. When David was faced with the situation, he was, he was always asking God, what do I need to do? Listen to this. It's a sign of wisdom when you ask God for what to do. Somebody came to see me some time ago. He was saying, I'm sure you have lined up the messages you want to preach. I said, no. I said, what do you mean? I mean, God, God is my witness. I can preach on virtually anything I want to preach because of probably some experience over the years, but I don't just say, ah, I like this message. Let me give it to them. No. No. Amen, somebody. You see, that's the place of waiting. Waiting God. At times, I'm asking God weeks ahead. Listen, as this series is going, I'm already asking God, what's the next thing you want me to do? What's the next thing? You see, and for me, I have seen over the years such kind of message that has great impact on people's life than telling them what you feel like preaching or what you know. Amen. You see, that's what we call the now word. Say now word. That's what we call what God is saying now. I've been amazed. I've had these testimonies. I can't even count it. People said, sir, it's like you are talking to me directly. I can't count the number of times I've had that over the years. Why does it look like that? Because I try to get what from God, what he's saying. Hello? And that's something you have to call by asking him. What do you want me to say? Where do you want me to go? What direction? What are you saying? At times, I could be on it for weeks. And at times, just one, one, one minute, well, I mean, some few minutes, I, I already have an idea. So, I, listen to this. When you begin to ask God for what to do, where to go, <laughs> and what he's saying, you'll be amazed. You will get wisdom. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I said glory be to God. Are you getting something out of this tonight? I'm going to close on this scripture. Psalm 119 verse 18 and 19. Psalm 119 verse 18 and 19. It says, open down my eyes. It's a prayer. The psalmist said, open down what? My eyes. Why? So that I can behold what? Wondrous things out of your word, or law. He now said in verse 19, it says, I am a stranger in the earth. All of us are strangers. We are pilgrims here. I'm a stranger. Look at it. Look at it. And I said what? Hide not what? It's a prayer. Hide it not. Do you know that if you can discern what God is saying in any situation, you'll be on top of the matter. You'll be on top of the matter any day, any day. Let me share this testimony with you. I remember 
you know. This happened maybe prior to the time before I left Rema. God's dealings was on me on several things. And one of the things as I begin to seek the face of God, I know after, you know, uh, my exit from Rema then, some of my friends, some of some people got very angry with me. Why were they angry? They said, you didn't carry us along. I said, <laughs> I'm following what God, what? Told me. This is beyond you and, and me. It's not about this. No disrespect to you, but you see, that's why I said, if you're going to walk with God, amen, somebody, you need to follow what he's saying to you. You can't afford to be a man pleaser. Amen, somebody. Of course, as a wise man, I apologize. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, listen to this. There's a, there's a, there's, I, I, I don't want to mention this person's name. You will know this person. One of the leading lights of the gospel in this country. He was supposed to be at the meeting. The meeting had been fixed and planned, everything sorted out. And the host called him, hello, sir. <laughs> we expect, ah, yes, I'm, I'm going to be there. This is in the morning, though. Ah, yes. Oh, I'm, I'm ready. God is going to. By the time it was afternoon, even somebody, he called him. He said, hello, man of God, I'm sorry. God says, I should not come. Now, I want to ask you, how, how, how are you going to ex explain that? He said, ah, what, what, what God is saying should not come? What kind of God is that? <laughs> this person, the host, understood. He said, yeah. In fact, this person, this person, if I mention it, he said, because this person is, I may be used of God greatly in this country. He said, if God told him now, now, where he is now to move, and he said, he will not even consult and do it. He's off. He said, because as far as he's concerned, what God has to say is more important than what another person has to say. You know, it's a level. Say it's a level, somebody. It's a level of work. One of the greatest blessings you have as a child of God is the ability to hear the voice of God. May you not lose it. I said, may you not lose your ability to hear God's voice in the name of Jesus. It will see you through this crisis. You will rise above this crisis and you will come out victorious in the name of Jesus. If you believe that, say better, amen. amen. Let's rise up on our feet. I want you to pray a very simple prayer tonight. And that prayer is this. Say, Lord, say, Lord, make me a better crisis manager. Go ahead and begin to pray. Help me to discern your voice. Help me to be able to know when you are speaking to me. Help me to be able to know when you are speaking to me. Help me to be able to know where to go. Listen, God does not want you to go everywhere. You are not supposed to be a jack of all trades and master of none. You are supposed to, your life is supposed to have meaning, purpose, direction. God does not want you to go to all the places. There's a place or places he has commanded for you to be in this season. And if you are in those places, the people you are spoken to, they'll be waiting for you there. There's a pot of blessing with your name on it. You will not miss it. I prophesy to you tonight that this season of crisis will be a season of lifting for you. Your best song will be sung in this season. Your best works will be produced in this season. Your best results will be produced in this season. You are not going down. You are going over. I said you are lifted. You are promoted in the name of Jesus. Where others may say there's a casting down. You will say there's a lifting up. I prophesy to you tonight in the name that is above every other name. Whatever is taking the feet of others. Whatever is causing the heart of others to be shaken. You will be a leading light. You will be the voice of God. In the name of Jesus. And I'm prophesying to somebody listening to me tonight. Peace. I said peace. I said peace. Every troubled water, let it be calmed. Every raging storm, I prophesy peace. There's somebody in the house tonight.
this is your hour of rising. This is your hour of lifting. Don't be shocked when promotions, don't be shocked when offers, don't be shocked when doors begin to open. I release the blessing of the prophetic word upon you tonight. Listen, that you have had the voice of God tonight, you've had the voice of his word. I declare blessings over you. I pronounce it in the name of Jesus. God will see to it that you are sorted out. God will see to it that you are lifted in this season. My God will see to it that you are not put to shame in the name of Jesus. I declare his hand, his hand of provision, his hand of support, his hand of grace upon your life tonight in the name of Jesus. You are lifted. You are raised by God. Come and lift up your hands and thank him tonight. Lift up your hands and thank him tonight. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. We give you praise tonight. We give you praise tonight. There's a lifting. There's a lifting. There's a lifting for you in this season. We give you praise. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. And we have our seats. We'd like to receive.